All right, welcome everybody to the call. Um, for those of you that missed, that are, that are watching the recording, I want you to know that because you weren't on live, I did a full 15 minutes of training prior to even starting the recording. You missed the meat of this, so that's what you get for not getting on live. Uh, drop in the chat box, just drop a boom in the chat box if you guys have already been blown away with some of the content that you learned earlier tonight. Yeah, just snoozy lose type stuff. So great, there's tons of booms. You can't see those on the recording, but people are just fired up. So anyway. Uh, just totally kidding. Just totally kidding. Uh, all right, let's get into it. So um, here's what I was thinking about quite a bit uh, earlier today when I was kind of thinking about you all, because really one of the ways I decide what to train on in these calls or on these calls, whether it be for this group or the European group, is I just kind of try and get a sense of what's the energy of the team? What's the collective like? What's the feeling? What kind of patterns might I be seeing, whether it be a pattern in how things are being marketed, whether it be a pattern in terms of seeing uh, engagement or interaction in the groups or lack thereof. This call is a great example of that, right? Not a criticism, just, just what is. Totally good, right? So I just kind of started to check in. And what I, what I came to the kind of feeling of was, was wanting to bring you all to center in terms of reality. And what I mean by that is what's happening in about, uh, what's the date today? Today is the 13th. What happens in about a month and a half? Let me know what happens in a month and a half. So it's November 15th. What happens in about a month and a half? Holidays and then what? Yeah, Santa, sure, okay. New Year, 2021. And how many of you, how many of you are, uh, are, are looking forward to the new year. Drop a one in the chat box. If you're just looking, for, looking forward to a, a new year, just like, God, man, let's get 2020 over with, right? Like time for 2021, right? Like, oh my God, like, please turn the page already. And uh, right, Ellie, Ellie's already ahead of me on this one, right? Like, what am I, am I really, I don't even know if I am this time, right? And that's, and Jesse just said it. And that's what I really want to talk with you all about tonight. You know, this, this time, you know, in the first time in our lives of any of us on this call, uh, the, the reality is, is that when the, when the, when the, when the date turns and becomes January 1st, 2021, the stark reality is that not much will have changed. And why I wanted to bring that to your, to your awareness. And some of you probably already are aware of that, of course, is because one of the things that I'm noticing, and it happens for all of us and hear me loud and clear when I say all of us, it happens for all of us. It's so easy it's so easy to use distractions or social media or family or any number of things to resist the reality of what we're experiencing in a given moment. And it becomes very easy when we're not in acceptance of reality is when we start to really suffer the most. And the reason we start to suffer the most is because we really start to lose our way. We start to lose our way in terms of our habits. We start to lose our way in terms of our discipline. We start to lose our way in terms of how lazy we are in our thinking. And notice I'm saying we. Now, just so I know that I'm not alone, drop a two in the chat box. So I know that I'm not alone and I'm not the only human on here. Like, let me know that, 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 that this is hitting you as well, right? Thank you for that, Antonio. Very clever. <laughs> so when, we, when, we're, when we're not in acceptance of what is, that's when we suffer. And so let's just talk about what is, okay? So what is, unless you live in the world of, we're gonna do whatever, no matter what happens, AKA Florida, right? <laughs> unless you're living in Florida, there's a high probability, there's a decent chance that we're gonna see some restrictions again, right? And it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are or why you think it's happening, right? Because all that is is resistance to what is. What we know is that there's a good chance that more restrictions are coming. Here in San Diego, where we live, we've already been rolled back, right? Uh, all across Europe, they're being rolled back. Michigan, today, I just read about it, Washington State. So even if you're in a state where it's not as aggressive as some other states, you have team members in other states that are being affected by these things. You have potential customers, business partners that are being affected by these things. And so the reason I kind of want to talk about it is so that we can start to really identify how do we move forward? And I don't mean in terms of what do we do on a day-to-day -day basis, because you all know what those habits consist of. You all know what it takes to build a business. You all know the skills. The system is there. That's not what this is about. What this is about is 
knowing that this is the reality of what life might look like for the next might be 60 days, 90 days, it could be another six months. We really don't know if we're being totally optimistic and we want to listen to certain scientists over other scientists, they're saying maybe return to normalcy, you know, end of end of spring, beginning of fall, right? That's all optimistic and that would be wonderful. And I think we're all praying for that. And, and until it becomes a reality, holding on to that hope, right, denies your ability to perform inside of a chaotic situation in a way in which most people aren't able to perform. And the reason that most people are losing there right now is because they're in a complete resistance to what's happening. How many of you are observing people on social media just being in complete resistance, right? Just fighting against the realities of what is occurring. Right. And again, this is not a political conversation, but like MC said, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of pushing and a lot of pulling. And there's a lot of this is why this is happening. No, this is why this is happening. And there's a lot of people fighting to be right. There's a lot of people fighting to be right. And understandably so. There's a lot of deep seated beliefs that are perpetuating themselves and permeating throughout our societies, no matter where you live in the world. And I'm not here to say one set of beliefs is better than the others or anything along those lines. My job solely is to help facilitate a conversation inside your mind and your heart that, that hopefully lands in a way that you get to a point of understanding that, hey, right now, this is just what is. And so who do I want to be in the space of knowing that we might go back into lockdowns, that we might not be able to eat out at restaurants, that we might have to potentially wear masks, not wear masks, that we might have to socially distance again, that we might, that the holidays are gonna look a little bit different than this year, than, than, than what we're accustomed to, that the gift giving ceremonies that we're accustomed to might be different this year, right? And who do I wanna to choose to be in spite of all of the uncertainty, all of the madness, all of the chaos, all of the mind boggling stuff that we're all seeing every single day. And Eric just used one of my favorite lines and one of my go-tos, which I was gonna to come to, but thank you for that, all good, right? No, it's all good, it's all good, right? I'd actually be disappointed at this point if you didn't jump in with something like that after how long you've been <laughs> plugging into these things. So it's totally fine, right? So, the, so, so we've gotta be willing to ask ourselves, okay, there's a hurricane swirling right? There's a tornado circling. Where is it calmest? When it comes to a hurricane or tornado, it's calmest in the center. It's the calmest in the eye of the storm. So the big question becomes, how can you put yourself in the middle of everything so that you can observe all sides of what's going on, and create an environment where you're being responsive and not reactive and create an environment where you don't get hooked by this one little thing that takes you out of the game for a week or two weeks at a time. How can you calm and center yourself and ground yourself and have conversations that allow you to create and raise the energy of the people you're with as opposed to allowing people to suck the energy from you? What are the conversations that you get to stop having? What are the conversations that you get to start having? Who are the people that you get to stop following? Who are the people that you get to start following? What are the things that you get to start saying to yourself? What are the things that you get to stop saying to yourself? What are the things that you get to affirm positively as opposed to the things that you are consistently affirming negatively? Let's come back to what I just said. That's a real important one. Everyone thinks in terms of positive affirmations, right? Positive affirmations. But affirmation doesn't always carry a positive connotation. An affirmation is something, something is some is simply something we affirm. So if I say I'm not good enough, I'm affirming that I'm not good enough. If I say that nobody wants to do this, I'm affirming nobody wants to do this. If I'm if I'm saying that, you know, people aren't willing to invest right now in their health or business or whatever it is, I'm affirming that reality for myself. So what are the affirmations you want to start creating and cultivating? How serious do you want to get about what you want the next chapter of your life to look like? Because the reality is this has been, this will have ended up being in all of our books in our lives. This will have ended up being one of the meatiest, longest chapters of our lives. It'll be one of the meatiest, longest chapters of all of our lives. And for some of us, right, 
for some of us, and I, when I say some, I'm referring to the people watching this training right now, the, the people that are watching the recording, because I make the assumption that you're going to be willing to play the long game and see, see your potentiality through all the way to the other side of this crazy journey called life, right? And so I'm, so I'm including those of you that are watching the recording, of course, even though you weren't here to get for when we started, and I'll shame you until the cows come home for that. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, but, but when you start to think about what do I want this chapter to look like? And I don't say this from a toxic positivity perspective or from a, hey, let's not, let's bury our heads in the sand perspective. But I think we all know, we've all lived enough life at this point that we know that in some way, shape or form, you're gonna look back on this chapter in your life. And you're gonna you're either be able to extract goodness that came from it, or you'll extract and extrapolate pain from it. Now, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of pain while they're in the chapter, while the chapter's being written. And sometimes it takes the chapter being written before we can reflect on it and go, oh, actually that served me in a myriad of ways. Drop a five in the chat box if you've absolutely had things in your life that when you were experiencing them was some of the most atrocious, horrible, horrendous, wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy pain. But then in hindsight, when we look back on it, we go, oh my God, the gifts, oh my God, the lessons, oh my God, thank you, thank you God, if that's your, you know, if that's something you believe in, thank you God for for challenging me that way, for placing that, you know, that, that experience in my life. Thank you, universe, for delivering a reflection of the things I was avoiding in my life at that time so I could grow and stretch and become someone, become someone new in the world. And typically, it's only in hindsight, but it doesn't have to be in hindsight. And what I just said is so, so key. It doesn't have to be in hindsight. You can start right now asking questions like, how can I cultivate goodness from this? What have I learned already this year that I'm ready to start to put into action and move forward into the coming days, weeks, months, so on and so forth? What are the lessons that I've learned? Who are the leaders that I've learned? Who have I learned to unfollow? What are some of the toxic relationships that I've learned to remove myself from? What kind of space did I create for myself? What can I be proud of? What am I willing to pat myself on the back about that I probably am not taking enough time to have to pat myself on the back about? What's working in your life that you're not giving yourself enough credit for that's actually working in your life? How much time are you spending focused on what's not working versus really taking a step back and go, wait a minute, when I put it in the grand scheme of things and I really evaluate what's happening in the world circumstantially, Maybe, just maybe, just maybe. There's some phenomenal gifts. There's some phenomenal gifts that are coming through in my life right now. I don't need to put gratitude on layaway. I don't need to put it on layaway. I don't need to make payments on it down the road. I can activate and engage in life in a way right now that says, yes, I'm compassionate and empathetic to everything that's going on in the world, but I'm not going to apologize for what I'm committed to creating. And I'm not going to stop showing up in a way that is light and loving and open and generous and receiving and prosperous and abundant simply because other people are saying, now is the time to be sad. Now is the time to be depressed. Now is the time to be lonely. All these people are suffering. It's all the more reason. It's all the more reason to pull yourself up every single morning and find a way to bring love into your life and love into your heart, to find a way to tap into whatever that source is for you, to tap into that source and to bring and bring forth some sort of energy that you can emit from yourself so that you can literally, literally, quantum physics, not woo-woo, so that you can literally, that's right, Brandy, so that you can literally call into creation the relationships, the conversations, the people, the experiences that you desire. Because here's what I can tell you right now in guarantee. Hundreds of millions, billions of dollars right now are transferring to people's pockets all around the globe. People are becoming wildly prosperous during this time. Some of them are doing it through malfeasance. Some of them are doing it in ways that are manipulating and taking advantage of people. We can't account for that. What are you going to do? right? It's an unfortunate reality of how some of the world is. But there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people right now who are cultivating and creating goodness in their lives because they see right now that even though there's a hurricane, even though there's a storm, within that storm presents itself an incredible opportunity for the people that are willing to show up, step up, and serve in ways in which you've never served before. But if you're hiding behind your keyboard and you're not willing to share on your stories what you're experiencing or what you're learning, then they're not going to know to come for you. 
They're not going to know that you're somebody that even when times were difficult, you found a way to hold your shoulders back and your head high and say, yes, I get it. Yes, the storm is hitting my face. Yes, the weather is rainy. Yes, it's cold outside. Yes, it's uncomfortable for me too. Yes, I'm watching things fly all around me and still I'm going to persist and move forward until because. And I don't know what that because is for you. I don't know what you want. But I know it's more than making a little, you know, making $500 a month. And I don't say that from the perspective that there's anything wrong with $500 a month. What I'm saying that from is the perspective of what is that $500 a month really about for you? What do you really want? What are you really focused on calling into your life? What are you really, really, really desiring at this point? two, three, four, five months from now, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, you're going to see still a division of people. You are. And I don't mean division in terms of infighting. Hopefully that kind of bridges over that time, but we'll see. What I mean by that is you're going to start to see a striking disparity because the reality is what happens in an economic recession, which is being influenced by a global pandemic. And that is that some people are not going to recover from this. But other people are gonna come out of it absolutely 10X from where they were heading into it. And I don't just mean 10X financially. I mean 10X spiritually, emotionally, physically, intellectually, 10X in their confidence, 10X in their certainty, 10X in their relationships, 10X in their identity in terms of who they are. And then this group over here, they're going to look at this group over here that's excelling and thriving, and they're going to go, I don't understand. How did you do it? And you're going to say, in the eye of the hurricane, I stayed calm. I didn't get attached. I did my best to stay neutral. And I don't mean neutral, meaning you can't believe what you want to believe. That's not what I mean. That's not what neutrality means. What neutrality means is, like I said before, is observing what I'm experiencing bringing it into my perception, deciding how I'm viewing the external events that are happening outside of my world, and then choosing how do I wanna interpret those things? How do I wanna perceive those things? How do I wanna digest that information? How do I wanna allow that information to go down into me cellularly? Because what happens is as that perception comes through us and goes down into us cellularly, it then regurgitates ourself, itself into new thoughts, new feelings, new belief systems, and therefore new results. So understand that everything you're allowing in in terms of how you process it is getting cellularly programmed to then regurgitate itself into the real results of your life. Not woo-woo, even though it's biblical, even not religious, even though it's biblical, right? Not woo-woo, even though it's spiritual. Quantum physics, very simple. Very, very, very simple and very, very, very complex. And the complexity is you being willing to be so disciplined in your thinking and so disciplined in your response to what's going on that every single thing that comes in, you recognize it and go, wait a minute, is this something I want to allow to germinate who I am? Is this a seed I want to plant into my field? Is this life-giving or is this poison for me? Even if it's somebody who you think whose job it is for you to enable and support their beliefs, it's okay to say, hey, I'm not the right person for that right now. Fill in the blank. Your perception is your, type it in the chat box. Reality, that's what we've been taught, right? That's incorrect. It's incorrect. Our response or our reaction to our perception is what creates our reality. It is in our response or our reaction to our perception that creates our reality. So I really want you to all take a step back and really, exactly, and what actions do we take, Jesse? How responsive are we? How reactive are we? What choices do we make? So for example, here's an example. Let's say Eric says something to me, okay? And I perceive it as him being a jerk, 
and he triggers me and I get offended. And rather than evaluating that anger and processing that anger and checking in on myself and what's this anger really all about, I throw a punch, okay? I throw a punch and I, and I hit Eric, okay? And I knock him out, which I would do because I'm much bigger and stronger than he is, like that. He'd just fall, no question. But anyway, I knock Eric out. And Eric says, no, I'm gonna press charges. And now all of a sudden I get arrested and I'm in jail. Why am I in jail? Because my reaction to my perception of what occurred became my reality because I wasn't willing to take a step back and evaluate what did I just experience? How did I experience it? In what ways am I going to allow this experience to define me? In what ways am I willing and excited to move this process out of me? What am I not willing to hold on to about this? What was this really all about for me? And when you learn, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time, you hear me talk about emotional intelligence all the time, this is how you can raise your EQ, the level at which you process your emotions. It is what is going to distinguish you over the course of your life from any other person you interact. I promise you, in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, people will not be evaluated on their IQs. They will be strictly evaluated on their emotional intelligence quotient, hands down. How do you interact with people. And when you look at what's happened in the world and we look at the amount of distrust that's been sown, what's it going to really take for you to build real community, real businesses, real, real abundance? What's it going to take? It's going to take you leveling up to some degree, your EQ, your emotional intelligence, so that you can have compassionate conversations with people. So you can learn how to ask better questions, but most importantly, importantly, so that you can learn and listen and learn how to distinguish between your ego and your spirit, your intuition and your head. And that all comes from not getting hooked by what you see going on online, by not getting hooked by seeing just because one person posts a picture of something doesn't mean it's true necessarily. By using critical thinking and taking a step back, taking a step back, what's really triggering me right now? What am I really allowing to affect me right now? And a really great question I like to ask myself is, what's the value in this? And if you're feeling anxiety, you can ask yourself that question. What's the value in feeling this right now? Is this a useful thought for me right now? If you're feeling angry, how is being angry right now serving me? What do you think is going to, what, what kind of question do you think you're going to come up, what kind of answer do you think you're going to come up with when you ask yourself that question? It's not serving me. Okay, great. What else can I focus on? What will bring me value right now? What can I focus on? Who can I pour into? Who can I love? Who can I serve? Yep. Why is it for me? What's happening for me? How's this working in my favor? You know, the Chinese symbol for luck is chaos and opportunity together, I believe. Pretty crazy when you think about it. There's so much richness in chaos. There's so much depth of exploration of who we are and what we're capable of and how we perceive things and the questions we're willing to ask ourselves. And that's the real big key is are we willing to ask ourselves new questions in order, order to create new results? So yes, technically speaking, yes, technically speaking, the calendar is going to turn January, January 1st, 2021. And according to the calendar gods, it'll be a quote unquote new year as humans have, you know, ascribed numbers to years so we can have some semblance of control over our lives. But ultimately it's irrelevant. All that's relevant, especially right now, especially right now is during time of great chaos and uncertainty. What are the areas in which you can bring certainty to yourself and to the people around you? And what I know for me in my life is that when I focus on the things that bring me joy, it makes life a lot easier. When I'm unwilling to get hooked by drama and nonsense, it gets a lot easier. Now, it's not a snap of the fingers. It's not, oh, I'm, you know, okay, I don't want to be hooked by that right now. And all of a sudden the mind just stops. That takes years and years and years of practice. It takes years and years and years of practice. But you'll be proud of yourself because what will happen is exactly high repetitions. What will happen is you'll stop yourself and go, oh, wait, I didn't stay in this as long as I normally would. 
I didn't sabotage in the ways that I normally do. I didn't use food to cope or alcohol as a way to avoid. I didn't veg out on the TV watching television for hours and hours and hours and not do my IPAs. Pat myself on the back, that's progress. I allowed myself to recognize what was going on and I made a choice in that moment that I'm gonna create a reality based on how I choose to respond to my perception of the event because ultimately all it is, is just an event. That's all it is. It's just an event. What makes us so uniquely rare as human beings is that we are the only animal that cognitively can make a choice based on external environment and circumstances. A lion cannot wake up one day and say, hey, I think today would be a good day to go vegan. It doesn't work that way, okay? It doesn't work that way. Could you imagine a vegan lion, by the way? Just, they should make a character to the vegan lion to be great. I really, that's the one thing I really, I really want you to start to focus on that, right? Is as the, you know, as, as other people start to, hold on to this idea of like, oh, a new year, it's going to be a new me, 2021, I just can't wait to turn the page, blah, 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 blah. All you're seeing is a denial of reality when you see that. So when you see that, just stop, check yourself, what can I get present to? And the word that just keeps coming out of me for whatever reason is cultivate. Just what do you want to cultivate? What do you want to harvest? What do you want to sow seeds of? Right now, and if you carry that energy and if you emit that energy in a consistent way every single day until, well, guess who people are going to choose to get into business with? You. They're going to join you all day long. All day long. So again, I know you all have individual hurricanes storming through your lives right now. I know some of you feel like the tornado has been going since the calendar turned January 1st, 2020. I know what it feels like to experience darkness and coldness and despair and apathy and a massive questioning of like why my life even matters. I get what that feels like. Some of you are there right now. Some of you aren't there right now. For those of you that are not there right now, even more reason for you to raise your vibration and for you to pour love into the groups on Facebook. Post videos in there, celebrate people, cheer people on. And for those of you that are on that spectrum, for those of you that do feel like you're exhausted and you're waning, and I get it so deeply, what can you control? What's the certainty you can create? Can you get centered? Are you willing to allow yourself to not be in resistance to the resistance? Can you allow yourself to not be in resistance to the resistance? Because when we accept what is, and we just allow what is to just sit out in front of us, then we can make moves accordingly. But if we don't, and if we stay hooked by what's going on and we fight to be right about what's going on and we race to be a victim, if we do that, then we're continually blinded by a perpetual story that doesn't allow us to see all the space that's in front of us with which to create. So as we hop off this evening, what I really want to really, 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 really pass from me to you is I want you to understand that when you're, when you are willing to allow yourself to just be an acceptance of what is and just put everything out in front of you, one by one, you can look at each individual circumstance that's happening and decide, how do I want to respond to this? Who do I want to choose to be in this given category? And as you do that, dominoes in your life will start to fall and it'll start to create space. And in that space, you have the ability to cultivate and create absolutely anything that you desire. Have a great evening, everybody. Lots of love. Stay safe, stay healthy, lean on each other. We'll see you guys soon. Mwah.